Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just while people are joining this webinar, I will uh, briefly introduce myself, anyone that hasn't come across me before. So my name is Tom Bodica. Uh, I am a business development manager with Farmax. And uh, the purpose of this webinar is essentially to give you um, been existing PharmIQ customers an overview of Farmax. If you haven't seen it before, I will spend about call it 15 minutes on just kind of general introductions to Farmax itself. Uh, we'll spend a little bit of time talking through the integration between PharmIQ and Farmax and give you a feel for the, the uh, data that can come from PharmIQ uh, into Farmax. And I'll walk you through an example of how that works with a, with a demo farm. Uh, and then we've also got uh, up to about 15 minutes or so for, for questions as well. So, um, that is the plan for this webinar. I will uh, share my screen here. Uh, and I should also say that uh, this webinar is in just a listen only mode. So if you do have questions throughout the session, feel free to uh, put them in the chat or the Q&A section. And um, I will get to those questions kind of towards, towards the end of the webinar. So uh, hopefully you're all seeing my screen here. If you're not, um, Please let me know in the chat, but uh, it looks like you should be seeing my screen here. So um, for anyone that hasn't seen Farmax before, this is this is what it looks like. And actually, sorry, one thing I forgot to mention is uh, we actually do have um, we do have a, an offer for existing uh, PharmIQ customers, which is basically uh, a discounted subscription to Farmax Base, which will allow you to uh, essentially have your farm set up in Farmax for the first time by someone in the Farmax team. We, Kind of offer that as a service and it will also give you a three-month subscription to a farmax analysis which essentially will allow you to run through some different kind of farm system scenarios for your farm as well so uh, i'll touch on some more of the details towards the end of the session with that one but for now uh, let's get into a bit of a demo for farmax so uh, this is farmax here i've got a uh, one farm in my list farmax Redmeat training and uh, the Farmax file I'm going to work on for most of this session is uh, this one here called monitoring. So you can have uh, several Farmax files. Uh, monitoring is typically the one that you would keep kind of most up to date. That's essentially like our current plan for this season um, has all of our feed budget, our forecast financial performance and our uh, environmental kind of emissions as well. Uh, so that's the one we'll be working on for most of the session, but you can also run scenarios in Farmax, which I will touch on shortly, and uh, you may end up with quite a few sort of Farmax files sitting in here in the scenarios folder uh, for different options that you may have looked at over time, whether those are different stock policies or cropping changes or nitrogen or forestry or whatever it might be, uh, those, those can live in, in the scenarios folder as well. So I will open up monitoring here. And uh, we'll start working through some of the uh, kind of basics of, of Farmax. So uh, essentially Farmax is uh, like a digital model of your farm system. So uh, what that essentially entails is all of the data that's going into Farmax will help you to describe what the uh, feed supply looks like on the farm. So we'll add in things like a pasture growth rate. Um, so for example, on this particular farm, I've got a couple of different pasture blocks here, a flat rolling block and a steep block. Uh, if I go through to pasture growth, I can see what my um, budgeted growth rate is for, for this season, for the 21-22 season. Uh, so that helps us to understand kind of the profile of, of feed growth throughout the year. Uh, we can also add in things like any crops, any nitrogen applications, uh, and that kind of helps us build up a picture of when feed is available. And we essentially balance that against the feed demand. So uh, this is a very simple kind of farm system that I've got set up for today, but we have a couple of different stock classes. We've got some bulls, a couple of different age groups in there, and we've also got some sheep, which is just essentially like a summer lamb finishing uh, setup. So um, within each of those, if I go into my one year bulls, for example, uh, and numbers and just drag that down a little. So um, fairly basic setup for this bull mob. I can see I'm buying 554 bulls. Uh, that's going to bring through a market price and also a weight. Uh, so we can get a better feel for sort of the financials as well as, as the physical side of, of that purchase. 
Uh, I can then go through and for the bulls, they're reasonably straightforward because uh, they're obviously not having calves or anything. So we don't have to worry about mating, but uh, we can add in some live weight gain performance as well. And that will uh, allow us to essentially uh, track their weight gains over time. It'll give us a better estimate of how much we should expect to be paid for them when we sell those bulls. And uh, of course that will flow through to our feed budget as well. <coughs> So that's a bit of an intro to some of the basic setup with PharmAx or the type of data that's that's going in there. Uh, we do have a few different uh, types of reports. So if I go up to my top level here, uh, where I've got um, you know the name of the training farm and monitoring, that will allow me to get uh, sort of overall farm type reports. So if I go to pasture covers, for example, this is what the uh, current average farm cover projection is in the green line there. We're obviously up to about the end of March today. So uh, though that would all be kind of considered actual pasture cover before today's date. And we've got a bit of projected pasture cover for the remainder of the season as well. So again, that will be pulling through uh, our pasture growth rates, um, all the stuff I just mentioned with nitrogen and crops and so on, and then balancing that against our expected uh, stock numbers and, and weight gains. and. Uh, should be able to basically um, forecast how much feed will grow, how much we will eat, and then uh, what is the pasture cover likely to do. And uh, the other line that we've got on the screen is this gray um, minimum cover line that essentially tells us, uh, we think you need at least this level of pasture cover to be feasible or to meet those production targets. And uh, you'll see for the remainder of the season here, we've got a pasture cover that's tracking, you know, well above our minimum requirement. So, uh, up the top right here, you'll see that Farmax deems the system feasible from a, a feed perspective. Uh, and that's kind of a nice summary of, of what's going on there. Uh, moving on a little bit from the feed side of things, we do have a couple of other categories of reports. So we've got some financial reports and some environmental, like I, like I mentioned. If I go to say the profit and loss report, uh, this will obviously give me some financial uh, performance data for the farm. And uh, a lot of this is calculated by Farmax. So um, it's reasonably flexible in how you can set this up. You can put in all your own costs. You can put in all your own uh, prices that you might have bought or sold stock for. Um, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, but for scenarios in particular, which, which we'll look at shortly, there is uh, quite a bit of flexibility to um, have Farmax kind of calculate some of these costs for you. So um, stock are a really good example. You might have seen in some of the sales and purchases we were looking at before, we've got kind of modeled costs. We bring in market prices. So it will be kind of calculating this uh, sheep and beef revenue based off you know, current market prices and what uh, weight gains I intend to do and, and so on. Uh, so this is a very profitable farm. Um, we're doing close to $2,000 a hectare, which is through the roof, I would say, for most uh, sheep and beef farms. Uh, so that property is performing really well, but we, we can get that profit and loss report. And uh, we can also see how that might change with different uh, adjustments to the, to the farm system. So that's the second type of report. Uh, the third type we've got is environmental. So if I go to greenhouse gas, uh, this is going to give me the current greenhouse gas emissions for the farm. So I'm currently filtered on total. That tells me that the farm's currently emitting uh, 1,637 tonnes of CO2 equivalents for, uh, for the season. I can filter that by hectare if I want to. So that comes out at about 4.7, call it, uh, tonnes of CO2 equivalents per hectare. And again, if you run different mitigation scenarios to try and reduce that greenhouse gas number, you can kind of see the impacts on all aspects of the farm system. So how does that impact the feed budget? And is it um, kind of biologically feasible? How does that impact the financial performance? And how does that impact the greenhouse gases? And um, a more recent addition, which we don't have time to dive into too much today, but a recent addition uh, to Farmax is also the ability to add in any forestry blocks if you're considering that uh, as an option or if you already have um, kind of tree blocks on, on the farm as well. So I will uh, briefly walk you through a scenario and then we will spend a little bit of time on the Farm IQ to, to Farmax integration. So to run a scenario, I'm going to save and close out. of the monitoring file, go back to open. 
Cool. And uh, I'm going to right click on the monitoring file, hit duplicate. That will basically allow me to create a new scenario. And uh, let's do something like uh, by winter lambs, just for argument's sake. And this could re be really anything farm system related, uh, whether it's a change in stock numbers or a change in uh, cropping of nitrogen uh, or a combination of a few of those things it could, could be a scenario here. So I'll open up my by winter lambs scenario. Uh, first thing I'm going to keep an eye on is my pasture cover. So I will uh, pop that pasture cover screen out. Um, that way we can basically just keep an eye on how the feed profile sort of changes as I bring in um, more animals. And I will also uh, start working on that. So I'm going to bring in a new uh, sheep enterprise. I'll call this winter lambs. We'll give them the category of finishing, obviously. Um, then you know, add a mob into their winter lambs enterprise. So you can have you know multiple different age groups. Um, your breeding enterprise is a really good example where you have uh, sort of under that sheep breeding enterprise, you'll obviously have your ewes, you'll have your hoggets, ewe lambs, mixed lambs, maybe some rams. Uh, you can kind of set up all those mobs in the next level down. So in this case, I'm gonna add some uh, mixed lambs. And then I can start working on purchasing some in. So let's say I want to buy uh, 500 lambs in April. I can type that in. Uh, let's say they're going to be 30 kilos. And let's also say I think I can get those lambs to do, say, 100 grams a day in uh, live weight gain through those few months. And uh, that will all kind of flow through to my feed profile. So uh, that didn't dramatically kind of break anything, which is a good start. Um, again, we won't have time to dive into it too much in this webinar, but uh, you can actually also extend Farmax out to add in kind of a second 12 months. So you, you could see the flow on effects to next season's um, pasture cover as well. And uh, just to give you a feel here, you can kind of crank these numbers up and see, you know, how much you kind of need to push it to sort of break things. So 5,000 lambs is clearly far too many. So I'll dial that back to just 500. And uh, those lambs are probably going to be sold next season. So that's the only one I'm going to uh, put in there for now. And uh, we will call the scenario at that. So uh, I'll save and close out. And then um, basically the last step essentially is just to compare the performance of those two scenarios. So if I go back to open, uh, I've got an option here to highlight both my monitoring, which is sort of, you know, what we're currently planning to do and the scenario, which is uh, what we're potentially considering doing. So open both of those up. And uh, I can then go ahead and get some comparison reports. So uh, if I go through to the profit and loss, first of all, um, obviously we sort of haven't run through the full timeline of these lambs arriving and then them being sold kind of the next month, but we do get some initial financial reporting. So our sales minus purchases is down about 59,000. We've outlaid about 59 grand to buy in those lambs. Uh, but we closed the season with obviously about 59 grand worth of lambs uh, at, at the end of the year. So uh, although we've got a drop in sales minus purchases, uh, the fact that we have more stock on hand is reflected in this capital value change. Uh, we have a few expenses that have been nudged up a little just based on um, a, a slight increase in stocking rate. Uh, but uh, again, you can be reasonably flexible with how those are calculated. And then we can see a fairly minor change in farm profit before tax. So uh, that one didn't move the needle hugely in terms of farm profit. It's actually come down slightly. Uh, and if we were to look at something like pasture cover, uh, we would see the impact of buying those extra stock um, in here as well. So I guess if you compare that to where we started the season at about a 2200 cover, we're now looking to finish sort of sub 1800. So it's not looking particularly flash. Um, and it doesn't look way more profitable or anything like that. So that would probably be something um, I don't think a lot of people would do for this particular farm, at least. Obviously, that might look really good on some farms. But um, the advantage here is you can you can run these scenarios through FarmX before 
obviously implementing them in, in real life and, and get a feel for how that's going to look. So, uh, like I say, any questions throughout, just pop those in the chat or the Q&A and I'll answer those towards the end. But that uh, gives us, uh, or gives you hopefully a bit of a feel for uh, what people are typically using Pharmax for. Uh, now, the next part of the webinar is basically going to be working through the PharmIQ and Pharmax integration. So, uh, the integration has been around for a few years now, and it covers basically two different areas of PharmIQ and Pharmax. And those two areas essentially are pasture cover and your stock regs. So um, it's, so it's a one-way integration. It, it's bringing data from PharmIQ into PharmAx. There's no flow of information back the other way, at least uh, not at this point. And uh, you can bring through yeah, average farm covers and all your deaths, purchases, sales, uh, that, that type of thing. Uh, again, kind of saves you entering the, the same bit of data twice and two different pieces of software. So I will open up the monitoring file here. So uh, this farm, I have already actually input some of my farm IQ credentials, which you need to do to uh, get the integration started. So uh, if I go up to the tools menu here, we've got an option called import, import from farm IQ. If I go to setup, uh, you will see some of your farm IQ credentials will need to go in here. So your username, uh, password, I will show you where that comes from in a second, because that's not actually your farm IQ password necessarily. That's uh, what farm IQ calls a token to uh, set up that integration and a farm reference. So that's the initial data that you need to get in there. I'll just briefly stop sharing PharmX because I will direct you to where to actually find that information in PharmIQ. Okay, and I'll reshare. Perfect. So hopefully that's all coming through. Um, I'm on PharmIQ uh, now, so uh, many of you obviously will be quite familiar with PharmIQ. And uh, the, the screen I'm basically looking at at the moment is uh, under your farm name here, I'm going to go to Partner Access. Um, if you haven't enabled Partner Access before, there will be an option kind of on, this, on the screen to enable Partner Access and allow this integration to go ahead. And uh, that will give you these kind of three key bits of info that need to go into PharmAx. So you've got uh, your username, you've got your token, which is uh, where it was asking for a password in PharmAx uh, just a minute or so ago. Uh, that's basically the info that needs to go into that section. And then you have a farm number, which for me is this FAR137 for this example farm. Uh, so that's where that data lives in, in uh, PharmIQ just to get the integration set up. So let's jump back to sharing the PharmAx screen. Cool, so back in PharmAx now, hopefully everyone's seeing that, but any issues just um, pop something in the chat and I should see that come through. So uh, in terms of getting the integration up and running, I've uh, already gone to tools important added the, the setup to put those initial credentials in there. I'm now gonna to head to update now. So if I go to update now, I'll get this uh, little pop out, which basically is asking me, you know, what uh, date range do I wanna to pick to import some of these PharmIQ events for? So um, in most cases, you're probably just gonna be going back to a start date of whenever your PharmAx file starts. So if you look up the top right of my screen here, I've got, July 21 to June 22 is the date range of uh, the PharmAx file. So uh, I would basically want to pull through all data from the 1st of July. Um, if you are new to using this integration and you've already got all your actuals in PharmAx up to say, uh, call it the end of February, um, maybe you might want to ignore any events in PharmIQ kind of coming through to PharmAx pre-February and you might put a start date of February and just import sort of February to March, for example. So um, you can be a little flexible there and the end date uh, by default that will just pick today's date. Um, 
Pharmax will have a lot of your sort of projected uh, sales and things for after the 30th, 31st of March. So those won't be impacted at all. It's just kind of historic sales and obviously cover measurements that, that we're pulling through. So I'll hit OK here. Uh, that should give me another pop out here, hopefully. Cool. So uh, the first time you go in to uh, do this integration, there will be this initial mob matching process. Uh, this is something you generally just have to do once, although if you do have new mobs uh, kind of come into FarmIQ later on, uh, you may have to just allocate those new mobs. But essentially what this is saying is these three mobs here are the different trait groups that you've got in FarmIQ. And it's just asking me basically where do those belong in FarmX. So typically you'll tend to have a lot more mobs in FarmIQ than you will in FarmX. So uh, you, can, you can match multiple kind of farm IQ mobs into a single farm X mob. Uh, in this case, we've kept it really simple and it's just one for one. So that's uh, case of for my 2019 bulls. I know that they belong in this two year bull mob. Uh, 2020 bulls belong in here. And these mixed lambs belong in mixed lambs. So um, that's all the mobs matched. If you do uh, try and do anything that Farmax thinks is a bit weird, like you know, try and match a, uh, a U mob into a RAM mob, or try to put a, a 2019 born mob into a 20, uh, 21 born mob, for example, there will be little warnings that pop up, but uh, all the traits and everything and birth years and so on are mixed up, matched up nicely in that example. So yeah, they are all good to go. So hit OK. Uh, we've now got seven events and nine covers ready to import. Again, I'll press OK. And uh, these are all the events that have come through from FarmIQ. So uh, that's pulled all the info through. Uh, next thing I'm just going to have a quick look at is my balance check. So this is basically a uh, reconciliation of your stock recs in FarmIQ versus FarmX. And at the moment, I am seeing that the uh, the one-year bulls, as of doing this integration, have a bit of a difference coming through. So um, I'm just going to pop this out on the side and uh, see if I can clean that up. Just to make sure these do align nicely. Cool. Now, what has probably happened here, and this uh, shouldn't do it for sort of every integration you do, but since we're using this integration on this particular farm for the first time, I suspect what's happened here is we may have just some double ups of events. So, for example, in my one year bulls here, I've got a purchase of 1108. And you'll see that that's made up of two sales down here. So I've got one on the 9th of January. That would have been my initial plan is to buy 550 odd bulls. I've then had the actual, which basically we treat farm IQ as the source of truth. So uh, it turned out that we did purchase that number of bulls, but it was the next day. And uh, that's what's come through from farm IQ. So do have a bit of a double up there. Um, so I will clear out our initial plan and we'll treat uh, farm IQ as the source of truth. So that's got our balance check cleaned up. Might just quickly work through some of the other mobs because I imagine a similar thing has happened. So I've got a double up of sales there for that one. And that one, so that just leaves my farm IQ, farm IQ events in that mob. And again, uh, same's happened in my lambs here. So I've got 5,500 coming through from FarmIQ uh, plus my initial planned event. So I'll just clear that out. Um, you shouldn't get these duplicates kind of moving forward once you've done this initial uh, integration, but uh, I'll just clean that up this, uh, this first time around. Cool, and we're all good to go. So uh, that's the integration of on the kind of the stock rec side come through, um, which has worked pretty well. Uh, the next thing I will just walk you through is uh, the pasture cover side of it. So if I go to my top level here and then pasture covers, uh, you'll see several actual cover measurements, which are these basically blue points that are uh, dotted along my pasture cover here. 
uh, those have all been pulled through from FileMyQ. So you'll see uh, lots of average cover measurements down the list here, or with the little FileMyQ banner so you, that you know where they came from. And uh, those obviously have kind of locked in my pasture cover uh, up until uh, the most recent walk that was done on the 16th of March. And that's going to give me a much better kind of updated forecast moving forward. So uh, we know that the cover was 2018 on the 16th of March. So that's locked in there. And then uh, Farmax is going ahead and doing the projections for the, for the rest of the season. So uh, that was a fairly quick run through, but that hopefully gives you a feel for uh, the for what Farmax is all about uh, in general, and then a bit of an overview of the current Farmax uh, to or PharmIQ to Farmax integration. So uh, I'll just briefly talk through the offer that we've got for existing PharmIQ users, which um, which will be of interest to to you hopefully. So. Um, just while I'm walking through that, if you do have any questions, uh, definitely pop them in the chat. That's basically the the full demo for this session. But we do we have sort of allocated a little bit of time for questions. So if you have any, uh, definitely let me know. But like I alluded to at the start, there, um, basically we're offering a, um, a half price or fifty percent discount essentially on a product we have called Farmax Base. Uh, so typically that's $595. We've discounted that to $295 for uh, PharmIQ subscribers. And uh, basically that will get you a few different things. So you will get a uh, PharmX model set up for your farm by one of the uh, PharmX team. So the way that essentially works is we will send you uh, a basic kind of data input form. Um, a lot of it is information that you will know probably off the top of your head for, <laughs> for uh, your farm. So basic farm areas, farm name, and then once we get into more of the details, it's around uh, cropping dates and your stock rec. Um, <clears throat> obviously, a lot of that will be able to pull through from FarmIQ if you've got that there with your stock rec and covers, but there might be a few gaps just to fill in. So that's how that process works. So uh, we will set up the farm for you, and then uh, we will basically um, just kind of go over what we've set up with you once you're happy with it. Uh, you will have a three month analysis subscription, which basically allows you to run as many scenarios as you want, uh, just like you saw with my uh, quick winter lamb scenario, and you'll be able to get some of those key outputs. So you can see how that impacts the feed budget, how it impacts profitability, and how it impacts your uh, greenhouse gas emissions as well. So if you are interested in that, um, basically just contact the Farmax help desk. You'll need to let them know the promo code uh, better together. Uh, we can send that up. We can send that maybe in a follow up to this webinar as well. So you've uh, got that in an email somewhere. Um, but essentially, contact the Farmax help desk. You can get in touch with us on uh, our 0800 number, which is 0800 Farmax or 0800 327 629. Uh, or you can email us at support at farmax.co.nz. So uh, definitely feel free to take us up on that one if you're interested. So I'll stop sharing my screen there uh, and I might just give it a few more seconds. If anyone's got any questions, feel free to pop those in the chat. Uh, and this webinar was recorded as well. So uh, in a follow-up shortly, we'll be uh, sending out the replay if you want to watch anything back from the session as well. But um, doesn't look like there's any questions coming through. So I will uh, call it there for the session. Thank you all for attending and I uh, hope you'll have a great uh, rest of your afternoon.